Perfect. Thank you so much, Jessica. All righty. Let's start uh, by calling this meeting to order at 7 p.m. This is the Hamlet of Beaver Creek Board meeting. It's June 16th of 2022. Our board is meeting via Zoom and it is being recorded. Um, do we have any, uh, let's see, attendees? Oh, we have one. Oh, there's our Amy Manning. Hi, Amy Manning. <laughs> uh, thanks for joining us. So I know you know everyone, so I'm not going to launch with uh, introductions unless uh, several other people who don't know us come on. Okay, this is going to be pretty quick when it comes to applications this evening. One, uh, we have no active applications. There were two, four, six decisions, all approved subject to conditions with one exception. So I'd like to call everybody's attention to B as in boy. And that is the ZO232-21 ZAP. Um, and this is that 111 acres across from Stone Creek Golf Course, uh, right there off of 213, the old Weiler Hayfields. And the request was, it's a hearings, it's a hearings with a hearings officer on June 23rd, if I'm not incorrect here. And um, we wrote a letter in response to our community meeting last month and basically explained all the reasons that we discussed last month, which was transportation issues, wetland issues, that in several cases, we really felt the application was deemed incomplete and that really we needed more information to give uh, meaningful input. So uh, we did just literally minutes before our meeting this evening, we received an email from the planner, which is Melissa Ahrens, and their recommendation to the hearings officer is denial. And it's a 28 page report. Um, I've emailed it to our board and I'm super happy. Uh, actually, I'll bet you Bill can put that on our website. Mm -hmm. That would be, so there you go, Amy, if you wanted to see that recommendation and all the supporting documents, it'll be on our website. Um, so we do have a testimony which I'm preparing. I'm just doing our letter, but I'm boiling it down and trying to hit the highlights um, on June 23rd at 9.30 in the morning. Now, why I have that highlighted on our agenda is <clears throat> I have spent a lot of time getting to know our neighbors in Karis and just a lot of the subdivisions and people that live around like on Mitchell Lane and such have contacted the Hamlet to talk about how did the, how is, does the Hamlet community feel about this application, which I've shared? Uh, many wanted to, you know, what, what can we do? So I gave them a lot of advice on how to write a letter, keep emotion out of it, but your observations are very valuable. And talk to many, many, many wonderful people. We have a lot of active people in the Keras area that are caring about this application. Uh, we also carried on the conversation about that you are in fact in the Hamlet. We would love for you to join us at our community meetings and we are here to answer questions and support you and da 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 da. Uh, one person in particular, and I'm gonna send the board uh, her letter to the hearings officer. She will also be testifying. And I had a long conversation with her. She's looking for a very meaningful way to participate in the community, wanted to know about different communities um, at the county level. And I encouraged her as a Karis resident to apply for our board. And that's why I wanna send this letter on to you because you will see that she uh, did wonderful homework, wrote a very comprehensive letter, covered many topics and discussed uh, her observations and how those, and that was things like seeing blue herons and ducks in the, the wetlands, um, that the eagles have nests over in the trees that would probably be taken down because of uh, development and such. So anyway, uh, her name is, just so when you get this email, you'll know why I sent it to her and at you. It's a, uh, Katrina Day, 
And I've kept all of her information and we'll be encouraging her to apply. I think she would be a wonderful board member. Okay, that all being said, we did receive a letter, uh, a, like a, a testimony. That's what I should say. Just give me one second from citizens. <clears throat> one moment. Uh, Jenny and Justin Mills. And they, it's about a one page testimony. And they asked us, and they said, Dear Planning Commission. <laughs> so I let them know that it would really be the Hamlet board. Uh, would, we cannot make the the Zoom meeting for they both work and they can't get away that day. And they asked if one of us would read this for them. Um, I'm happy to do that, but my concern level would be, can I testify representing the Hamlet board and its community and then turn around and read a letter from one of our citizens? And I worry about getting the answer no. So that being said, um, is there anyone that was planning on listening to this testimony that I could send this testimony to you and you could speak on behalf of these citizens? First off, I don't think you have any reason to worry if you want to give the okay. testimony. As long as you're clear that you're reading this for a member of the Hamlet that could not make this meeting and that they had requested that you read it for them. I think that if you make that clear, there's no problem at all because there's no confusion then. There's, you're, okay. you're not testifying for the Hamlet for them. You are reading their testimony for them and you just happen to be from the Hamlet. Um, Wonderful. And I kind it, of was hoping you'd say that, Bill. And, and they did send it on to Melissa Aaron. So it is going into the record that they wanted okay. it read. And I have zero problem doing that, but I don't want the hearings officer to say, oh, I'm sorry, you can't. Because <laughs> if I, they I, do, I I'm going to be texting you, Bill. I think it's perfectly reasonable because you're you're doing two things. You're just one person doing two things rather than one thing from just you. From Okay, you. okay. All right, good. I was hoping you'd give me that advice. So I will plan on doing that. Once I have the testimony, well, it's really not going to be a whole lot different than the letter I wrote. Uh, it's just going to be, able to, I'm not going to get into some of the weeds and I want to hit on a few highlights, but it's going to be super uh, comparable. And now that we have um, the planner's recommendation, once I read that 28 pages, I may be pulling stuff out of there to testify on as well. But I will send that to you all. Um, so that was the one decision that, or rec this was actually not a decision, a recommendation. Uh, that I wanted to bring up. Did anyone read any of those decisions that they wanted to talk about this evening? Okay, beautiful. All right, let me move along here. Uh, Kenny, um, you had a C4 meeting on June 2nd, and I saw on the agenda uh, TriMet and housing shelter field trip. Could you give us a report on that? Um, yeah, I wasn't able to attend, but I I know some of what was talked about from the executive committee meeting this week. Um, the field trip is kind of in in lieu of the retreat that we didn't have. One of the things they talked about doing was a trip down to Eugene to look at some of the housing solutions they've got down there because they've got multiple different uh, things they've implemented and arguably much better than our neighbor to the north. And certainly um, without the baggage that is associated with our neighbor to the north. So they were thinking it might be a good opportunity to kind of see some options on, on how to proceed with housing issues. And then the TriMet item was kind of just an update on their, their plans. There wasn't, I didn't, I don't have too much to report on that. They were kind of just saying, oh, we're going to work on this and this. They've you know, got some additional money that'll get farmed out, but I don't expect significant service changes in the Clackamas area. Okay, great. Uh, Kenny, thank you very much. I do know that you've officially gone through a Clackamas County budget process with the Board of County Commissioners, Odushare. 
<laughs> I mean, okay. So the county staff works up a proposed budget that gets presented to the budget committee who looks at it, can make changes. We didn't, we just uh, uh, got presentations from the different departments and did a little bit of deliberating, heard public testimony and then we approved the budget. And Oh, I guess we did make um, a minor change. They had, uh, in the proposed budget, they had forgotten to include some additional sheriff's deputies out of the levy money. Um, so they asked us to just add that and we did. Um, but that was, I think the only real change, some minor compensation adjustments for the elected officials in the county, gave them a COLA that kind of tied with what all the county employees were getting and then a small market adjustment for one that was under market. And then, yep, it goes to the Board of County Commissioners. I don't know, this month they'll make whatever changes they wanna make and adopt a budget. I don't know if that's happened yet or not. I'm not sure mm -hmm. when that's supposed mm -hmm. to happen. So did you find the process um cumbersome, interesting, well done. I guess I've never been through it because I've obviously never been on a budget meeting, mm -hmm. uh, but I know that the commissioners have said it's just a huge time consuming process. And I'm just was curious as a CPA, what you thought of it. Uh, yeah, I mean, we were there two full days and then part of a third. Mm -hmm. And they, I mean, they've got, they've got it pretty well oiled. If we've got questions, they work on getting, they obviously have lots of staff that's waiting, whatever they're normally doing, they're, they're aware that if any questions come, that's top priority because we ask questions sometimes and would get responses pretty quick or things brought in. Um, they seem to know what they're doing and have worked the process out pretty well. Um, awesome. Yeah, government accounting's its own weird yeah. system. So. Very good. Kenny, thank you. Anything else to uh, bring to the board this evening? Uh, not that I can think of. Okay, great. Thank you. Bill, you're on. <laughs> so first off, Kenny, uh, government accounting is no stranger than uh, telephone accounting. Telephone accounting is totally bizarre. Tammy sat on the board for uh, a session and she knows it is really weird. So everybody has a weird accounting, but uh, account, uh, government accounting and telephone accounting are completely the same. And one other thing I wanted to just mention about on the TriMet stuff, one of the things that's really big in uh, transportation discussion is the fact that there is no transit really in Clackamas County that certainly goes from any place to any place. Uh, you know, you can't get there from here. Um, and with the all of the discussion of tolling, there's a big impact on how somebody who can only take a bus gets from one place to another. And so uh, TriMet is sort of on the hook because they are the lead agency for transportation in the entire area. And they dole out money, they dole out the federal money to other uh, groups. And uh, so they're really on the hot seat on how do you handle this lack of uh, transit in Clackamas County. So yeah. and even they, though they just say, they say, you know, they say, oh, it's not our problem. It is. Yeah. They've got a, I think they've got some temporary funding, if I recall correctly, for like a one-year pilot. Well, they're doing the bus on shoulder thing from Wilsonville up to um, uh, not Lake Oswego, but uh, yeah. Tualatin. And yeah, that's, thought, you know, sort of uh, around the edges kind of yeah. thing. There's, there's no way to get from Oregon City to Tualatin on the no, bus. But I thought, they, I thought they were supposed to be looking at something to do that, but they don't have any particular ideas or even how far down 205 to go. So I don't, until they've got a plan of some sort, I don't really 
see anything coming. Right. Uh, I, I tend to agree with you. I think that they're just not looking at the, the issue. But anyway, on to, to my little portion of this agenda. Region 1 Act met. We continue to talk about lots of things about transportation. There's nothing spectacular to report to you. Um, I have links to all of the presentations we've seen. And if anybody wants to be bored to death, I'll be glad to send them along to you. Um, the CPO Summit did not meet this month. We're, uh, in, we're going to the community leaders meeting in lieu of the CPO Summit meeting. Uh, and that's coming up. And I hope that other people besides me can be involved with that. Um, Clackamas Committee, County Committee for Citizen Involvement. Uh, we had one meeting that I went to and nothing else has really changed. It's about the same. We're still plotting on how we can overtake them and uh, turn them. No, I didn't say that. Uh, that was a complete misspoken part of my, I didn't mean to say that at all. Um, but we do want to make sure that the CCI gets more involved with really supporting citizen involvement. Um, C-800 citizen- uh, Real quick, Bill, I'm sorry. I just want to let everyone know because not everybody gets invited to these leaders meetings. I just forwarded Stacy's newest revised agenda to the leaders meeting in case anyone can make it. So sorry, go ahead. Good. Good. No, I, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I hope everybody can spare a few minutes on Zoom to uh, go to that meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, it's looking at the new agenda. I don't quite understand what they're talking about, but um, you know, you find out when you get there. So um, anyway, I hope that people can uh, pretend to be uh, <laughs> interested citizens. Um, the C-800 Oversight Committee, uh, we have not had a meeting. I have no idea what's going on. Nobody's told me anything. Uh, we, should I take that off your agenda or just leave it on bill? Um, you can take it off and when I get something, I'll let you know. Oh, okay. okay. Okay, that was the Oversight Committee? Yeah, that's the Oversight Committee. Okay. C-800. Okay. I'll take it off and then you just let us know. Thank you. Community Road Fund Advisory Committee, we have not met. Uh, we have. I think that we now actually have a full committee, but we haven't met. So, um, you know, staff runs most of these things. So we have not met. There's nothing really to talk about. We haven't parceled out any more money to anybody. So um, not much to say there. And BCT, uh, is. we're still operating. We're still working. Uh, the the uh, shutdown of cable TV actually went fairly smoothly. And so we now have more bandwidth in the coax system to support more internet connectivity. And it, it has grown right up there. We are now uh, using 10 megabits, the megabytes a day of data that we're buying from uh, Direct Link. And our, the, the, the numbers keep going up in the usage and the price per unit keeps going down. So that's a good thing. And I don't know what else you'd like me to talk about. <laughs> Unless there's something else you wanna bring up. That, that was the quickest bill report I have ever heard. That was well, great. I'm just trying to, to get with the program here, so. Uh. <laughs> that was great. Thank you, Bill. All right, um, Jessica, other than you're going away for a while, anything you wanted to bring up this evening? Um, uh, yeah, yeah, stay on of top things. of minutes, go ahead. Yeah, a couple of things. Um, I still, um, I was a little bit late, very late with uh, last month's meeting notes. So those have been sent to Tammy for review. I expect those to be sent out hopefully before the weekend. Um, before I leave, so really sorry about that. I will make sure to get uh, these board notes out um, ASAP also. Um, and can I get a confirmation that Tammy's gonna be providing the minutes for um, the, 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 the Hamlet meeting next week? And then Bill is going to be the, the, the Zoom guru, Zoom ninja next week? Uh, Bill is yes. Okay. Uh, Cheryl's out, so he's our third backup on or second backup on that. 
Cool. And I did want to confirm, Bill, that Jessica has in fact sent the Zoom link to our guest speaker. So that's for sure covered. And I will double check. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, I did want to talk a little bit about because I got um inspired by our last guest, I think it was the last guest speaker. Um, where they were talking about volunteer opportunities um, in our community to help with the homeless um, issue. And one of the organizations that they brought up was called Love One. So I started looking into like uh, opportunities that they have and they do have relatively regular, um, like every Thursday, every Tuesday, like second Sunday, it's, they're very, very consistent with their um, with their volunteering opportunities. So I just want to encourage people to go check them out. I'm gonna to try to see if I can get my niece and nephew to come with me and- um, uh, is, that a, is that a link? Yeah, I can, I can send the link. Oh, I would love for you to do that. Then that's my little reminder to get on it. Yeah, it is pretty cool. They have a lot of opportunities, it looks like. Here, let me post that oh. in the chat. And when you send the link, maybe it's something Bill can pop onto our website. Yeah. That would be super wonderful. Yeah, I'm really excited. So they do like laundry, laundry days, food distribution days, um, shower events, which I haven't looked into what that means. But yeah, I'm, okay. I'm pretty excited about it. I'm hoping, encouraging yeah. other people to go investigate that more too. Oh, this looks great. Yeah. Uh, great, Jessica, good job. Yeah. And that's all I had. Great, thank you very, very much. Uh, Mark's not here. Um, he's off volunteering the St. Paul Rodeo this evening. I don't think that there's any um, big park report other than I do see some different uh, uh, Fourth of July item decorations started at the parks. So that's very exciting. Uh, one of the things about just because Cindy and Mark are super, super volunteers and they have their fingers in many uh, different pies out there. Cheryl and I did not, this last month, we were not able to get together with them, which we need to do on several different levels. Number one, uh, they still do have the fundraised cash from the Easter that we need to get to Cheryl. And, and you know, I'm, I'm not worried about it. What I am is that we need, that was a big reason to sit down with them and kind of go through the process of uh, budgeting, requesting money, then getting the money back and how all that happens. So, I will, in the meantime, while Cheryl's out, uh, go over and get that from them and, and then give them all the information we were going to share on how to do that process. So it's on my priority list. Um, and I think that's it for parks. Uh, Joe, other than spraying. Haven't. Haven't done anything more with the sign. Um, I know, but we've got like nine gorgeous days starting, I want to say Monday on. Yeah, I'm going to be mowing and spraying and going on, going camping. So, oh, um, no, no, no. no. <laughs> so, so I'm thinking July, probably around by the middle of July, I'll get that thing up. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. Just give me when you've got, I mean, I think soon we'll see this weather consistently being good and we need that to do touch up painting and stuff. So right. when you've got a day to pull this off and, and it doesn't have to be a weekend, but I would like to get the engraver and the wood donator right. there so we can do a photo op and stuff. So, okay. You'll just let me know on a date. Yep. Okay. Beautiful. Anything else, Joe? Okay. Mr. Hip, how are you doing out there? Well, pretty good. Um, surviving day to day, still working on trying to get some stamina, which seems to be very difficult to come about. So, but other than that, fairly decent. Wonderful. You hang in there. Um, anything news you've heard from the Sheriff's Department recently? Uh, no, not at all. Okay. Uh, and, uh, you know, I just hope that uh, Jessica, you just send the link to Lieutenant Mendoza also. Uh, he's always, he's on, he's on perpetual involvement. Oh, every, great. Every, yeah, every month he's automatically on there now. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thanks. He's like one of on us. That. Yeah. Great, what was great. that? He's like one of us. <laughs> 
He is. And, you know, I was talking with a couple different people, Mike Vesner, and I'm trying to think of the other person who work with him frequently. And he just, he is so, so highly respected. It was, it was very cool to continue to hear that. Okay. Um, Cheryl, uh, we all got our treasurer's report, I hope, in, in the email. And so I didn't see anything that stood out. I know Cheryl is still working with PGA on the trust report accuracy as well as deposit slips. So that's probably something she'll take care of when she gets back. Um, okay, I have a lot of miscellaneous. Hopefully this will go pretty quickly. I got, a, I got my oh, hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Bill. Um, I, just to, it, since Cheryl's not here, we can't really ask her directly, but sort of to the whole board, uh, we're about halfway through the year. And we still have uh, a total of $3,600. And are we on track? Are we looking that we don't need any more? Are we, how are we doing in terms of our budget versus what we've got? Um, well, one of the things is the four signs still, and I'll get there in a minute. Um, and, and that's gonna be coming out of the checking account. And so that's going to take a good sized chunk there. Um, at this point, you know, we just don't have a lot of expenses flagged. And so we're kind of with Zoom in a limbo situation. Again, signs, uh, post office, the electricity at the park, those are just the kinds of things that are coming in. You know, we didn't request anything new until obviously next. June, July 1st of 2023, primarily because we just don't see it. The only, like, again, yeah, signs were the big one. And so uh, I, I, it's hard to say, are we on track? But I, I don't foresee any issues, Bill. But wouldn't hurt to do a, uh, this is what we forecasted and this is where we are. What? And normally quarterly, um, Cheryl sends that to me. And then if I see anything standing out, I'd send it on to you all, so. <clears throat> Yes. Sorry if I remember wrong, but our budget year runs July 1 to June 30, right? Right. So are we getting more funds come July 1? No, no. We requested no, no funds for the 2022-2023 year, okay. um, primarily because we just didn't forecast any expenses. Yeah, I, I couldn't remember if we'd done that last year or this year, so... Yeah, so we won't see any funds coming in until July 1st of 2023. Okay, thank you. And, and at that point, obviously. Yes, Joe? Which, if we do get the signs and we do our normal post office and we do our normal power bill, we should be broke probably around July we'll 1st. Be, yeah, yeah. The checking account side, not the trust account. Right, yes, you are correct. We'll yeah, be coming 16, in closer. Yeah. About 1600 bucks in there, I think. So yeah, we're going to yeah. be... We're going to be down on money at that point. Yeah. Well, well, and that's kind of the goal mm -hmm. because let's say if you get 2000, they're going to take off what's still in your checking account. So it, it is a goal to try and get that down. But thank you, Joe. Uh, you're completely correct. Okay, so let's talk real fast. Uh, you remember the historic overlay that was requested to be removed off of Beaver Creek Road? Okay, then the Board of County Commissioners supported removing that and Elizabeth Grazer Lindsay um, sent her email to uh, of her intent to uh, appeal at LUBA. Um, there must have been some conversations about what was the basis of that appeal because that doesn't come out until you actually file your appeal with LUBA. And the attorney, Nate Boderman for the county must have talked with Elizabeth. I don't know this, but it makes logical sense. And uh, the county pulled it back. They, they felt that they did in fact miss a step somewhere. In the meantime, two of our county commissioners, uh, Martha Schrader and Sonia um, Fisher are very, Martha has a tremendous background in the historic overlay process. And Sonia is very interested in the process. So they wanted to talk to us about what kind of went on. And so we did a really quick Zoom. I did a quick Zoom with them. And we just said, number one, we didn't know much about this at all. And so we, as a board, quickly did our research on it. 
talk with the planning director, uh, Jennifer Hughes, and she brought us up to speed that, you know, it's an overlay, you can apply for it. Originally, lots of historic monuments were literally just put in, whether you requested it or not. Uh, there's no incentives, you don't get anything for it. Um, and there are no rules. So you don't have to maintain anything. So do we kind of talk through that? And I said, you know, as much as you say you value historic buildings, you know, the proof's always in the pudding. You either value it by making rules and incenting the following of those rules, or you don't. And if you don't, it doesn't really tell me that you do value it. So, and it was kind of a very interesting conversation because Martha's response was, well, I need to go talk with the committee they need to be more strict. And I said, well, we, we got the criteria that they were gonna be measuring this on. And you could pretty much tell this house wasn't meeting much of the criteria. And there was a percentage that had to be met and all that. And so, well, it used to be a committee that was really, really, really firm. And I said, so you want the builder to just wait until it hits the ground and then apply or, I said, again, until you have in rules about maintenance with an incentive, I don't understand this. It was, it was a fascinating conversation. I, and Sonia really didn't say anything. She just was interested. And Martha was going to look into it. And that was kind of where it stood. They did not know that it was going to be appealed. And they did not know that their attorney pulled it back. And that it would be obviously coming back to the Board of County Commissioners. They didn't know any of that. So I just want you to know that it was a very fascinating conversation. And, um, and then, of course, we gossip. But. <laughs> okay, uh, the next. Uh, I already talked about Katrina Day, possible future board member. Board training did not get done. That was where I was going to kind of do our current board and when everybody got their training, but uh, that's just for future documentation. So I will get that done by next month. I did follow up uh, and Bill was copied as well, but uh, with Mallory uh, on the four signs for the Welcome to Hamlet signs. And that was on June 13th. And I have not heard back from her. Actually, I followed up prior to that as well and haven't heard back. So sounds like another invitation for a Zoom call. That seems to get things boiling again. So we may have to follow up and ask for a meeting to find out what's holding it up. Uh, website. We, uh, I did touch bases with Diana Kreitz, and she's just over the top thrilled that we now, thank you, Bill, thank you, Melissa, thank you to the world. We have a business level website, and now Diana can go in and begin to do all the things that she's wanted to do. Uh, historic pictures and a shopping area and all that kind of stuff. Now she just needs some time because she has a bunch of property and she too is out spraying as we all know. So she knows our list and she will get on it when she can. Uh, I'm not gonna do community involvement because I've done nothing there. Um, oh, community meeting, historic segment, same thing. Oh my God, transportation, same thing. Oh, I'm pathetic. Oh, I can talk about grade school. So um, I think you saw all the emails that came in from David Van Tassel about Yet again, they're parking. And well, of course, at the last meeting, we had this conversation when Lieutenant Mendoza was there saying, yeah, I'm kind of seeing everything you're saying. Kids are walking out onto the road between cars. There is no sidewalk. They're parking very tightly, all that stuff on Yeoman. So Mike Besner, who is just really awesome to work with, uh, we went back and forth and back and forth. And he said, well, you know, it's like a fire, that's a fire station problem, or that's a, this problem. So I said, you know what, we just need to talk. So I got him on the phone and I said, Mike, you're a thousand percent correct. It's everybody's problem. It's the school districts because it's their event. And they're the one that doesn't have a parking lot to put all these people. And it's the fire marshal's problem because they can't get their articulated things through there. And it's the sheriff's problem because they're parking in no parking zones and the deputies are doing nothing about it. And of course, they're not going to. I said, it's everybody's problem. But I'm going to tell you something. A little kid runs between two cars and they get hit. 
nobody's going to like that you and I had this conversation and nothing got done. So Mike, something's going to get done right now. And we're going to feed you solutions until you say we can do it. And then that's the solution we're going to do. And he was like, what does that mean? And I said, well, right across Steiner is a big exclusive farm use property. And in the past, they offered, they, they said, take an acre, do some excavating, throw some gravel on it, paint some white lines across Steiner, and you've got a parking lot. So I'm making a formal proposal. We want to do that. Here's the address. Here's the township range and lot number. I want one acre at the corner of Beaver Creek and Steiner. I've got people that come in and excavate it. We'll raise the money to put gravel on it. You guys come in and paint some white lines and we'll be done. Well, he, he gathered the people, Joe Merrick, Jennifer Hughes, all the transportation, the engineers, Ken Kent, all of them. And they sat down and had a conversation. And they said, it's not impossible, but, and then they begin to go through the list. The school would have to actually own that EFU land, it's high valued farm and just boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. And I said, okay, well, it's not impossible, but none of that's gonna happen. So you, you've got the map up on your, on your computer. What else? Let's find a piece of property around that. I happen to know Clackamas River Water owns some property north of that. How about, can we have an acre? Can we put some gravel on that and put an acre on that? And he's like, oh, um, oh, that's three and a half acres. Wow, they've got a lot of room. And I said, now they're going to put another tank there. We already know that. But there's no way they don't have room that we can't put a parking lot on that. So now he's looking into that. <laughs> and I said, please don't come back and say we can't. If we can't, then I want, we can't, but you can do this. Give me something that we can do, whether that's talking to neighbors, the community coming together, we have to solve this problem. And I said, and quite frankly, Mike, there are no sidewalks, there are no shoulders on this road. And I am looking toward the county to get that fixed. So get that on your your you know, high priority safety issue. And Joe Merrick, will, we're gonna to talk to him in August about that. And he said, yeah, okay. So anyway, I just want you to know that we're pushing super, super hard to find a solution. I think it's crazy that you can't take a little piece of EFU at the corner and throw some gravel on it, but apparently you can't. <laughs> <coughs> Any comments? Nobody <laughs> wants to have everybody wants to avoid responsibility yep nobody wants to take any responsibility for it i mean even the people who are giving the the land who are willing to give the land away would not want to be held liable if anything happened on their yeah. property because you, you know it's just it's it's that this kind of thing is nobody wants to take that so it's it's really a difficult situation and yeah. i'm Thank you for pushing on it. And maybe we can get some resolution here. And I'm I, a believer that it's never the obvious. It's always the outside the nine dots, the creative, how can we make this happen? And, you know, I want to mention, and, and I forgot to mention, if it's so impossible to get that off at BFU, tell me how John Roseburg was able to section off a piece of that property and give it a 99 year lease to the fire marshal. And they put a fire station, that was all EFU land. And that was a 99 year lease. So it's not impossible. And, and guess what? Fire marshal didn't own that land either. So I should have, I should have hit him with that one. <laughs> Poor Mike. So well, he keeps I've, calling me. I, the rules might be just different for a school versus a fire department too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the things he said was, as many rural schools are, uh, that school is on EFU land. So it's a, a non-conforming use. And he said, I can't tell you what their conditions of approval were, but he goes, I can pretty much tell you um, that they're outside of what they're allowed. So if they were to do something like this, 
it reopens every aspect of that non condition or uh, non conforming use. And he goes, I don't know if the school would be willing to do that. I don't To me, that's such an empty threat, but whatever. I mean, I'm like, whatever. But that's just the way the rules work. Yeah, that is true. Go ahead, Bill. So I have just a, a side comment here. Um, Matt Carlson, who's on the BCT board and is a teacher at the Beer Creek School, said that their um, uh, student count is down 150 from last year. So the school is smaller than it was in the past. And that's just an interesting thing. And he said, you know, it's not just Beaver Creek, it's lots of schools are smaller than they used to be. And that's due to COVID, that's due to people teaching their kids at home thinking, oh, this isn't so hard and whatever. But uh, there are not as many students at uh, the elementary school as there used to be last year. So mm -hmm. just I'm not surprised. Yeah. On our ranch, over half the children are now being homeschooled and they were not before. So, and that's exactly what it was. They started doing it and went, I'm liking this a lot. And then that was it. They're just keeping them yeah. up. Okay, uh, that was it for miscellaneous stuff for the agenda. I hope you all got a draft agenda on email. As we mentioned, Cheryl and Jess will be out of town. Bill's gonna take over being the Zoom host. Our guest is Jake Goodspeed. He is the principal clean energy originator. Um, and he, uh, yes, I've confirmed with Jess that we, he has received his Zoom invitation. I have um, heard a confirmation that we're going to, thank you, Bill, uh, you recommended that I get a hold of them, I-205 update, we have our person for that for July, and then as I mentioned, Joe Merrick will be back in August to chat with us about roads, so, uh, and then uh, on the agenda, let's see, we've got who's going to be there, our guest speakers, no land use. Uh, oh, let's see what day is that, 22nd. No, the next day I do the testimony. Go ahead, Bill. So I just want to confirm with Jess that um, has Jack Goodspeed received an, an, uh, an invitation as a panelist? I have sent the Zoom invitation as a panelist and requested feedback if he had any issues receiving the invita invitation to let me know. Great. Thank you. Yeah. And um, uh, Marcus Mendoza has automatically received the invitation. That is correct. Okay, great. I'm just, just trying to make sure I know what's perfect. happening for, for Zoom management. Yeah. That's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. Okay, so we've got our reports, financial, transportation, and parks. Um, old business, I, I don't even think at this point I'll even have the Hamlet sign on there because really that's going to be a July event. So mm -hmm. I didn't really have anything old or new business um, unless you all can come up with something. I mean, I'll pull something out of our agenda to put on there, but nothing super burning. So you, you'll pull the... Uh wooden sign off of the old business? I think so, and just have it in July, yeah. Because mm -hmm. yeah. by then, it should be done. It'll be yeah. the end of July. I don't think we meet till like the 28th or something, so. Uh, and then, oh, there's our, our guest speaker, April De Leon Galloway, Public Involvement Outreach Manager, I-205 Improvements Project. That's gonna be July, so, and that's, yeah, Town Hall. So uh, excited about that one. I think it's going to be interesting to see what they have to say. And that's it. Anything else for the agenda or the Hamlet? Bill. So uh, that Grange is having a blood drive on Friday mm -hmm. right after our meeting. So I won't, won't take our sign down until Friday morning. But on Friday morning, I'm putting up a sign that says Grange blood drive. Right now, it just says blood drive 617. See the Beaver Creek beaverfreak.org and I have put up uh, an announcement on beaverfreak.org about the Grange blood drive but on Friday I will change the sign and put it up so that people can see the sign that says it's the the Grange doing the blood drive and the times so perfect thank you and I, you know I'll just mention um 10 o'clock church had contacted us about 
I guess their pastor is going to be on sabbatical or something and they've got a new one, but they're looking for a music person. And I just love that they're sending that information to us to get on. Uh, Bill puts it on our website. Diane has been putting on social media, as was the blood drive. And it's just cool that we're beginning, you know, the floodwaters are starting to move and they think of us to contact for for communication and involvement. What I'd like to do is have that same thing going on with the Clackamas Soil and Water. Um, uh, the Grange does it. I know Pam is always keeping us posted. Uh, also with the saloon, it would be nice to a little bit more, even though Mark and Cindy are pretty connected with them. So, okay, that's it. Oh my goodness, it's not even eight o'clock. So on, on, on your um, Grange update, just mention the blood drive. I will. I just will pencil that right in. Whoops, wrong one. Okay, um, got it. Anything else for the good of the order? Jessica, you be safe. You have a very, very, very good time. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're gonna have a great time. It'll be so much fun. Amy, thank you for coming. She just said bye on chat. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Okay, Joe, go spray. Still light out. You want to adjourn, Tammy? Oh, yes. Oops, I forgot. Uh, we're officially adjourning at 746. Thanks, Jess. Yep. Okay, I'll get minutes to you. Good night, Jack. Um, thanks, everybody, for being here. Have a good evening. Bye. Bye.